Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Fernando Florido and I am a GP in the United Kingdom. In today's episode, we're looking at the summary of the NICE guidance on asthma management. The full NICE guideline also contains advice on asthma diagnosis and if you're interested in this, please refer to the corresponding episodes on this channel. Remember that there's also a podcast version of these videos, so have a look in the description below. We will start by saying that we need to consider possible reasons for uncontrolled asthma before starting or adjusting medicines, including 1. Alternative diagnosis 2. Lack of adherence 3. Poor inhaler technique 4. Smoking and 5. Occupational exposures, amongst others. By the way, we will define uncontrolled asthma as three or more days a week with symptoms or three or more days a week with required use of a SABA or short-acting bitragonist inhaler for symptomatic relief or one or more nights a week with awakening due to asthma. Other pharmacological principles to follow are that we will review the treatment after four to eight weeks of initiation or change if needed, we will offer regular daily inhaled corticosteroids rather than intermittent therapy and that we will adjust inhaled corticosteroid doses aiming for the lowest dose required. The pharmacological treatment that is recommended in the guideline is for people with newly diagnosed asthma or asthma that is uncontrolled on the current treatment, so no need to change people who are already stable. NICE has produced three pathways recommendations. One, recommendations for adults over the age of 17. Two, recommendations for children aged between 5 and 16 years of age. And three, recommendations for children under 5. But in fact, the recommendations for adults and children between 5 and 16 are very similar. So in order to avoid excessive repetition, I will amalgamate them together and simply point out the difference between them as and when appropriate. And even before we start, I need to point out the difference between inhaled corticosteroid adult and pediatric doses. NICE makes recommendations in terms of low dose, moderate dose and high dose of inhaled corticosteroids, but this means different things for adults and children. For adults aged 17 and over, up to and including 400 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent is a low dose. More than 400 micrograms and up to 800 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent is a moderate dose and more than 800 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent is a high dose. However, for children and young people aged 16 and under, the thresholds are half of the adults, that is, up to and including 200 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent is a pediatric low dose. More than 200 micrograms and up to 400 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent is a pediatric moderate dose. And more than 400 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent is a pediatric high dose. And remember that budesonide and beclomethasone have dose equivalents, but the potency of fluticasone, for example, is roughly double that. NICE has produced a table of various inhaled corticosteroids showing their low, moderate and high dose thresholds. Please have a look in the episode description if you're interested. We also need to be aware that at the time of publication, the use of some medicines was off-label in children, like the use of some leukotriene receptor antagonists, long-acting bitter agonists and MART recommendations. Asthma management follows a stepwise approach. In adults and children aged 5 to 16, firstly, we will just offer a short-acting beta 2 agonist or a SABA as reliever therapy for infrequent short-lived wheeze. Then, if there are symptoms of uncontrolled asthma, we will offer a low dose of an inhaled corticosteroid. Remember that uncontrolled asthma would be asthma-related symptoms three times a week or more, or causing waking at night. If asthma remains uncontrolled, we will offer a leukotriene receptor antagonist in addition to the inhaled corticosteroid and review in four to eight weeks. Then, if symptoms persist, 
we will offer a long-acting beta-2 agonist or a LABA in combination with inhaled corticosteroid and we will consider stopping the leukotriene receptor antagonist treatment depending on the response. If an increase in the treatment is still needed, we will offer to change the inhaled corticosteroid and LABA maintenance therapy to a MART regime with a low maintenance inhaled corticosteroid dose. Let us stop here for a second. What is MART? MART stands for Maintenance and Reliever Therapy and is a form of combined inhaled corticosteroid and LABA treatment in which a single inhaler containing both inhaled corticosteroid and fast-acting LABA is used for both daily maintenance therapy and the relief of symptoms as required. MART is only available for combinations in which the LABA has a fast-acting component, for example for Motrol. Inhalers with Sanmitrol, for example, would not be suitable for this. If asthma is uncontrolled on a MART regime with a low maintenance inhaled corticosteroid dose, with or without a leukotriene receptor antagonist, we will increase the inhaled corticosteroid dose to a moderate maintenance dose, either continuing on a MART regime or changing to a fixed dose of an inhaled corticosteroid and a LABA with a SABA as reliever therapy. And finally, if symptom control remains poor, we will consider one of the following. One, we will refer to an asthma specialist and we will do this especially for children as we consider stepping up their treatment. We can also increase the inhaled corticosteroid to a high dose as part of a fixed dose regimen with a SABA used as a reliever therapy. Or we could also start a trial of an additional drug, for example theophylline. The pharmacological treatment pathway for children under 5 is slightly different. It can be difficult to confirm asthma diagnosis in young children. Therefore, these recommendations apply to children with suspected or confirmed asthma. Asthma diagnosis should be confirmed when the child is able to undergo objective tests. In terms of pharmacological treatment, first we will offer a SABA as reliever therapy. Then we will consider an eight-week trial of a pediatric moderate dose of an inhaled corticosteroid in children under five with asthma-related symptoms three times a week or more or causing waking at night. After eight weeks, we will stop the inhaled corticosteroid treatment and if symptoms did not resolve during the trial period, we will review whether an alternative diagnosis is likely. If symptoms resolved but reoccurred beyond four weeks after stopping, we will repeat the eight-week trial of a pediatric moderate dose of inhaled corticosteroid. If symptoms resolved but then reoccurred within four weeks of stopping, we will restart the inhaled corticosteroid at a pediatric low dose, not a moderate dose. If the suspected asthma is uncontrolled on a pediatric low dose of inhaled corticosteroid, we will consider a leukotriene receptor antagonist in addition to the inhaled corticosteroid. If the suspected asthma remains uncontrolled on a pediatric low dose of inhaled corticosteroid and a leukotriene receptor antagonist, we will stop the leukotriene receptor antagonist and refer to an asthma specialist. Now there is a self-management section that we will address now. And it says that all patients over the age of five should have a written asthma self-management action plan and we will also consider it in the under fives. In it, we will explain that pollution can trigger or exacerbate asthma and we will include in the personalized action plan approaches for minimizing exposure to indoor and outdoor air pollution. There is separate guidance on how to minimize exposure to air pollution and I will put details to this in the episode description. Within a self-management program and when the asthma control deteriorates, we will offer an increased dose of inhaled corticosteroid for seven days to adults who are using an inhaled corticosteroid in a single inhaler. We will clearly outline how and when to do this and what to do if symptoms do not improve. When increasing inhaled corticosteroid treatment, we will consider quadrupling the regular inhaled corticosteroid dose, but we will not exceed the maximum licensed daily dose. 
For children aged 5 to 16, the self-management plan should include advice on contacting a healthcare professional for a review. If they have not been taking their inhaled corticosteroid consistently, we will explain that restarting regular use may help them to regain control of their asthma and that the evidence for increasing inhaled corticosteroid doses to self-manage deteriorating asthma is limited in this age group. NICE has given a short explanation of why they have changed the recommendation on increasing inhaled corticosteroid treatment within a self-management program in children. I will put details of this in the episode description in case that you're interested. Also, we will try to identify people with asthma who are at increased risk of poor outcomes, for example, severe exacerbations or hospitalizations, and we will use this information to optimize their care. We will base the risk certification on factors such as non-adherence to treatment, psychosocial problems, and repeated episodes of unscheduled asthma care. When it comes to decreasing maintenance therapy, we will consider doing so when the asthma has been controlled for at least three months, updating the asthma action management plan and discussing possible effects on how to monitor them. When reducing maintenance therapy, we will only consider stopping the inhaled corticosteroid treatment completely for those on low dose of inhaled corticosteroid alone who are symptom free. In terms of the ongoing management of asthma, if control is poor, we will, at every review, check adherence, check inhaler technique and whether the treatment needs to be changed, and ask about occupational asthma if relevant. For the monitoring of symptoms in adults, we will consider using a validated questionnaire, for example, the asthma control questionnaire or asthma control test. In addition, at each review, for everyone aged 5 or over, we will assess control using either spirometry or peak flow variability testing. However, we will not routinely use fractional exhaled nitric oxide or challenge testing for monitoring purposes. And finally, we will check the inhaler technique at every asthma consultation when there is deterioration, when there is a change in the device, at annual review and if the person asks for it to be checked. We have come to the end of this video. I hope that you have found it useful and if so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching and goodbye.